the state of Texas, white trash and Nazis. We're not talking about a Trump rally. <laughs> this is Puppet Master, the Littlest Reich. Puppet Master, The Littlest Reich is a 2019 horror film directed by Tommy Wicklin and Sonali Laguna. This is the same team that brought us Wither, We Are Monsters, Blood Runs Cold, Madness, and The Unknown. It was written by S. Craig Zoller, who wrote Asylum Blackout, Brawl in Cell Block 99, Dragged Across Concrete, and Bone Tomahawk. It stars Barbara Crampton, Udo Kier, Michael Pare, Thomas Lennon, and many more great actors and actresses. So the premise is pretty fun and original. You have all of these puppets from the original Puppet Master movies and some new puppet creations that are all brought to this place in Texas for an auction. Unfortunately, before the auction can get started, they are brought to life by an evil force and they're hell-bent on murdering everybody in the building. So yes, in this movie, the Puppet Master universe actually exists. It's real things that happen and it is a direct sequel to all of those earlier films. So you have this pretty rock-solid horror pedigree. You know, everybody behind the camera, everybody in front of the camera, and the heritage of this film are all rooted deeply in horror. But will that be enough to elevate this movie from B-movie schlock to something greater? As you guys know, when I talk about movies, I talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. That being said, let's start with the good. <laughs> Right away, you're going to notice that this movie is pretty stylish and fun, whether it be the shot selection, you know, the weird angles, the lighting, there's a lot of neon lights. It really makes you feel like you're watching a comic book or, you know, a sequel to Creepshow. There's a ton of practical effects in this movie, so many practical effects, and when they do have some CGI, it looks great. It's pretty seamless, actually. And that goes for the makeup effects as well. Basically, everything that's done in this movie when it comes to horror that's done practically is top tier. I really like the introduction to this movie. It has a comic book feel. It gives you the whole backstory of why these things are happening and what happened in the past. Given the fact that this is an S. Craig Zoller screenplay, the backstory, you know, the, the world building, the character building, it's all there. The movie's not excessively long, but it does give you enough time to get into these characters, to really bond with them and to enjoy them and to care about what's going to happen to them the puppets themselves they're really a blast they're really cool designs you have the originals then you have a bunch of new ones and you know the way that they kill people it's just really fun it's interesting it's violent it's gory it's just a good time the movie was filmed in texas which i really dig because i was born in houston texas and most of my military training happened in texas whether it was in san antonio or San Angelo, so I love seeing Texas on screen. As always, the dialogue for the most part, because Zoller wrote it, is pretty fun, it's clever, it's back and forth, you know, have this great banter, lots of good jokes, and then you have a lot of great dynamics between individual characters and group dynamics and everything else that really propel the movie forward. There are a lot of boobies in this movie. I love me some titties. There's nothing better in a horror movie, especially like a B-movie horror film, then violence, gore, and titties. Yes, I know that's something weird to say that is great about a movie, but remember, I'm in Doha, Qatar, where every movie that you see in the theaters is censored, so I haven't seen a movie with great boobs in a long time. I love boobs. Something else I love is Nazis, okay? <laughs> you know Nazis always make amazing characters, amazing enemies on film, so I love when Nazis are the bad guys. I don't love Nazis, right? So you've got Nazis, gore, violence, boobies. This is a very hard R movie, and I love it for that, you know. So many movies compromise these days. Even horror films, they go for that PG-13 to try to get the biggest audience possible. Not this movie. It's super R, and it's super awesome. There's some pretty fun stuff that happens in this movie. There are certain things you don't expect, and it's really cool when, you know, it transpires. There are certain times in this movie where you see something is about to happen, and you know it's going to go a certain way. In your heart, though, you just wish that it will go horribly wrong, and somebody is going to die while they attempt this thing. And it actually happens a couple times, which made me laugh out loud. And, you know, that's pretty rare with horror. And I say laugh out loud because the movie knows what it is, all right? It's a very hardcore horror film, but at the same time, it is a lot of fun, you know? every kill they try to be really creative there's almost no repeat kills in the film and some of the things that happen to the characters is pretty disgusting but they are super entertaining i love the fact that there's a reason behind what these puppets are doing i mean given the fact that they're nazis and they're you know controlled by nazis you know it's basically a hate crime so even though it's a silly violent horror film you have this commentary on hate crimes which is pretty weird. And it's also cool because a lot of horror movies don't go into why something happens. I mean, look at The Walking Dead. They still haven't said why there's a zombie apocalypse, or sorry, a walker apocalypse. 
So to have a reason for what's happening on screen to show the origins of it, kind of cool. Putting all that good stuff aside, it's time to talk about the bad. Some of the performances are a bit stiff. You definitely could tell that people were maybe a little bit nervous or just they weren't seasoned actors or whatever. Now, you know, they're not horrible, but they're not great either. The soundtrack is not very good. Uh, it's not that it's bad, but it's very loud. It's very intrusive. Um, even though it's classical music, you can tell it's not real instrumentation. It sounds like it's recorded, you know, like samples and they did it on the keyboard. So the soundtrack kind of brings down a lot of the moments of the film. So not only does the soundtrack kind of clash with the actions that are happening on screen, a lot of the dialogue, as clever as it is, is hard to understand. So much so that I had to rewind a few times to hear it. And even then, sometimes I still couldn't understand what was being said because it was too quiet or the delivery was a little too muddled. So I had to turn the subtitles on when I watched the movie. Outside of the stylish lighting that gives you this comic book feel, a lot of the shots, a lot of the scenes are overlit. If you want to light a scene strongly, do so, and then maybe in the color grade, darken it up, give it a more mood. A lot of the scenes just feel flat aesthetically. They're just kind of there. It's almost like a sitcom, you know what I mean? Just everything is lit and there's no mood or atmosphere. Even though the practical effects are pretty great, there are a couple parts that are obvious that they're dummies and stuff. They didn't quite transition very well from the real thing to the, the dummy kill. And even though there are some pretty cool surprises in the movie, you see a lot of it coming from a mile away. And as fun and interesting as the characters are, especially our two main protagonists, there is a character in this movie that they tried a little too hard with, and I think you're supposed to really love him, but I kind of couldn't stand him, and his name is Cuddly Bear, and he talks about himself in the third person. I really tried to like Cuddly Bear, but I just couldn't, man. Cuddly Bear is kind of the worst. The ending isn't the worst, it's not the best, but it's definitely not, you know, one of these horror movies that really screws up the ending. It could have been a little better and maybe a little more subtle and not so convoluted. You know, they were basically trying to leave room for a sequel, which, you know, I'd be on board to watch. I know that sounds like a lot of negative stuff, but Thomas Lennon, Nelson Franklin, Barbara Crampton, Jenny Pellissier, their performances are really good. They really did it in earnest. They cared about the movie and it comes across. So their performances alone bring this movie up beyond what it would normally be. You've got a lot of fun, creative kills. You've got a cool backstory. You've got boobies. You've got gore, violence. You know, you've got puppets. You've got a lot of stuff that is pretty interesting and fun to watch. It's definitely not going to win any Oscars, but it's not going to win any Razzies either. It's a solid and fun watch for people who enjoy horror or for gore hounds like myself. So with all that being said, what is my score? Drum roll, please. Six out of ten.